Hello and welcome to the Grade Cricketer on 7. Australia have only gone and done it. They've drawn the Series 1-1 over there in Perth. They've only gone and done it. We'll be speaking about everything that's happened over there. Not at the Wacker, but at Optus Stadium or Perth Stadium. They have two names for some reason. Uh, but also, all you want to talk about is sledging. And I promise we will get to that. The BBL starts tomorrow. That's also a thing. Uh, and then finishing the show off with hashtag AskTGC. My name is Ian Higgins and I'm joined as ever by Sam Perry. And Sam, a Christmas tree. Yes, not Dave anymore, just a Christmas tree. But uh, rest assured, Dave will be back with us for our next show. He's on a fact-finding mission in Berlin mm. uh, for the great cricketer. But uh, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, well, the first test win by the Aussies in 288 of your Earth days. That's nine months and 13 days. People have been conceived in that amount of time. The Faf Duplessis curse mm. lifted. The mm. Faf Duplessis in a towel in Durban in a stairway curse has been lifted. Australia have only gone and done it. Pat Cummins took the last catch on his knees, which is yeah. where Australia has been oh. ever since Cape Town. Nice. And we've, uh, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, oh. all my housemate on a Sunday afternoon after a night on the circuit. And we've, we've risen and now 1-1 one, one in Perth. He goes, uh, this wasn't just a, like a victory for Australia. They say that like cricket is the winner. And it's a terrible cliche, but I've, I put it to you. He goes, the cricket wasn't just a winner. It was a triumphal, glorious win for cricket. Like I'm talking Roman chariots yeah. coming through <laughs> because we didn't just, win, we didn't, you know, I'm talking Roman chariots. I'm talking feather beds. I'm talking grapes. This was cricket coming through mm. into the uh, Rome metropolis as yes. they did all those years ago. Yes. Um, if you follow that image because not only like did Australia win for the first time in 288 days I believe as you said but this is sort of Australia proving to itself that not only um, can it win cricket but it can do so dare I say semi gracefully a lot of people didn't think it could be done they thought you had to viciously abuse your way to winning in Australia but all of a sudden we have these kind of intelligent wit behind our captain's verbals we have other guys playing tough without needing to sledge uh, is this a new era he goes? Yes, it is a new era. It's a Tim Payne area. Mm. Uh, mm. area. Uh, one, it's also just laying his first win. We should celebrate that for a moment as well. That's right. I promise to you, listener, uh, viewer out there, that we will get <laughs> to, we will get to, yes, hi, mum, we'll mm. get to the sledging because that's all anyone wants to talk about. The cricket also happens, but people want to talk about what's he like as a bloke. Mm. Good blokes, bad blokes, good and evil, mm. binary. The world mm. is binary. We learned that mm. last week. Okay, so let's also get into the actual cricket yep. first. Okay. Uh, so many things to take away um, over there in Perth. I mm. think probably the most obvious place to start would be not at the Wacker, mm. even though it's very Wacker esque yeah. wicket uh, off the stadium over there. Crazy wicket, but also exciting. It, it was like in, in one sense the new Perth Stadium, off the stadium. Why is it called whatever it's called? Is like a little bit cavernous. It'll only be filled like three times a year, usually for preliminary football finals, because we live <laughs> life through an AFL prism now. Yes. Sorry, Channel Seven, but it's true. Um, sadly. But um, you could still feel a bit of vibe in there. We were there earlier in the test match. There's still, like, it, it can be good. There's good acoustics there. It's a real kind of coliseum atmosphere. And you know what? The character of the wicket, mm. he goes, or the pitch, I should say. Dean mm. Jones got upset by right. people calling a pitch a wicket because right. cricket people get upset about really strange things. Right. Um, the character of the wicket was still the same. It was still Perth. It was still wild. It was still kind of bouncy. It was still fast. It was really hot there. And Australia prospered. So, you know, like Perth is the like, sort of spiritual alpha city of Australia. And uh, it really came to the party. We don't need to be alpha as humans anymore. The city did the job for us. Mm. Um, that Perth Stadium over there is just crazy. We were very fortunate enough to do a live show uh, over in the Wacker of all places. Tickets still available for Melbourne, Sydney, uh, Brisbane and Canberra. Uh, you can go to our Facebook page to buy those tickets. <laughs> there goes a free program unnecessarily. Mm. Yeah, not allowed um, to do it. But not allowed to do it, but we just did. Mm. Um, and we were looking over the, you know, the over the wacker, past the scoreboard, and there's this monolith in the background just, yep. just staring at you. Mm. And it's just this big, empty, cavernous white mm. elephant. But mm. you know, the people over there, like, they mm. like it. Mm. Perth is unbelievably bright. And we said that to the Perth audience. Mm. They said, no, it's not. Well, it is. Yeah. It's just nothing but, but land out there, mm. heat, sun. My mm. goodness me, the sun. I'm still blinded. Yeah, we were literally like, like FIFOs. We, we flew in, we flew out mm. of Perth. And we turned up and we told them, as our East Coast elites, mm. that uh, in <laughs> fact, the Wacker was a better place to watch cricket mm. at. Um, mm. What we meant by that was, I'd like to watch it there once mm. and watch something really good happen there. Whereas the locals actually said, it's, uh, it's really just too hot and there's no protection from the sun. So they're welcoming off the stadium. That was uh, one of my takeaways. Well, off the stadium, Pez, um, the drop-in wicket there, from, made from Gloucester Park, it was yeah. 
crazy, but uh, one man who did uh, manage uh, the conditions quite uh, quite well was Virat Kohli scoring a magnificent century in the mm. first innings. 100 mm. in the losing side, though, so mm. he has defeated cricket once mm. again. Does like scoring a, a 100 in the losing side here in Australia, and mm. I say I'm all for it, Virat. Keep scoring your runs. It's fantastic, mm. uh, as long as Australia keep winning. Um, so his... He also did a celebration and bat during the talking, which is yeah. weird because yeah. he then spoke to Tim Payne relentlessly for the mm. next few days. Yes. That was a highlight. What else did you take away well, from the Well, I was going to say, he goes, like, and, and just relax. You know, this is a great cricketer. We will get to the verbal stuff. We know that that's what you want. Of mm. course, this is the Netflix generation. We mm. value plot lines and drama and character mm. above um, all else, you know. But, yeah, and we know that 99.94% of the talk is going to be about mm. Tim Payne and his graceful uh, verbal display. But like there were things that happened in the actual cricket that we might talk about first. Mm. So let's talk about, this is a bit of a mini segment almost. He goes, things that happened in the cricket while everybody else focused on sledging. <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's get, I mean, what was the first thing you picked up? Like what was the one thing from the actual cricket that happened that you want to talk about? The things most pertinent to talk about? Ah, oh, well, the sledging. <laughs> um, well, uh, Marcus, Demarcus Boogie Harris uh, scored <laughs> a test keep going 50. With that. Fantastic. I'm going to make it stick. Yep. I'll, make, I'll make it trending somehow. Mm. He scored 50. Finch, 50. Yep. Uh, Kawaja, sec uh, th third innings yep. of the match, a 70. His lowest 70, his lowest 50 in test match cricket so mm. far in his career. Mm. Really grinding it out. Mm. That was exciting. I just think Boomer is just an unbelievable bowler. Mm. Uh, what else? Hansen took a really skeptical, mm. uh, ooh, a dodgy mm. catch against. Uh, Definitely Rakko. a catch. Definitely caught it, but you know, we'll just we'll play to the Indian fans as mm. well. Um, Stark fixed his body language. Yep. I thought that was good. No longer the posture of a croissant, according to Shane Warne. I just made that up. Mm. Um, and then uh, also Nathan Lyon just does the job again. Yeah. So to answer your first question, what did I take away from the match? Well, mm. India didn't pick a spinner and Australia won because um, because Ashwin's really good. Yeah. Australia did pick an off spinner and he got man of the match. Yeah, exactly. I, I think a, like a big thing for Australia was they bounced back, particularly in the batting stakes. I mean, the main issue Australia had mm. going into this series, and it still probably will continue to be an issue, is mm. their ability to literally put runs on the board. Okay. And I think to have three new guys contribute significantly, Harris with 70 in the first Boogie. innings, Boogie with 70, I mm. should say, pardon me, mm. uh, Travis Head with 58, Aaron yeah. Finch with 50, mm. um, was something that they're gonna take a lot from. Um, beyond that, you mentioned Kawaja as well. His 72 from what, 100, what was it here? 100, uh, 213 deliveries mm. is sort of an example of that, uh, and dare I say, you know, Langer said, it's like that pretty boy toughness mm. Mm. Uh, that is coming to define this team after this test. Uh, yeah. You know, he didn't sledge anybody. Mm. He just copped blows to the, uh, to the ribs, to the mm. hand. Mm. Uh, it was the most inelegant kind of like um, innings that sort of lack, like, I've never seen Kawaja less fluent than he was in that innings mm -hmm. as well. But yet, like what he did was pretty much put India out of reach of the match, so. I think there's something in it, Pez, about just mm. really batting time. There's not, mm. I feel like there's been a few years since Australia valued the fifth day of yep. the Test match. And yeah. I think, I think CA probably don't like the fifth day of the Test match, <laughs> but I think it loses the money, but. What about the ads? Um, but <laughs> the ads are good, yeah. I mean, like we just see, we saw Tom Latham over the ditch there. Mm. He scored, he scored a 264. Mm. He scored his mm. 200, about 400 odd mm. balls. So that's, that's mm. you know, a strike rate clearly, if I do my maths correctly, mm. of less than 50 runs per 100 balls. So, but you know, 264, not, Kawaja mm. doing the same thing. He also did the same thing in the UAE, just batting time. It's it's okay to win a test match on the fifth day, yes. which is what Australia has done, but I think mm. they haven't valued that previously. But I think like what what this test match showed was how difficult this wicket was to bat, and people were sort of complaining about the wicket. I actually think it's fantastic. Yeah. I think it's absolutely magnificent. You know what people like to watch test cricket? Make the wickets as ridiculous as possible. Yeah. Because the only reason people watch NASCAR is for the accidents. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that one people see get hit, but it was funny seeing Pat Cummins get bowled from a ball that rolled and it bounced halfway down the wicket. That's, that's, that's exciting for that's me. That's right. It's a sort of humour that you need. So what, what you like, you like moody wickets. You like a bit, because oh, it was, it was yeah. docile mm. and then it misbehaved and then yeah. it was docile again. Mm. And if you're a good player, you could make it look docile. And mm. then if you're a good player, it would completely misbehave and shoot up at your head mm. like it did with Marcus Boogie Harris from yes. uh, Bahari's part-time off spin mm. bowling. Mm -hmm. um, can I just take a second, speaking of making pitches look good, mm. about Coley? Mm. Because his century was imperious. We're going to absolutely crucify him later in the show. Hello, oh, yeah. Indian fans. Uh, but, it, you know, in what was like a supremely difficult match to bat in, he really did stand head and shoulders above everybody else. Yeah. He drove ferociously. He defended ferociously. Yeah. He got the 100 uh, in a losing side. He said, I'll let uh, my bat do the talking. And then he decided, um, despite that, to sledge everybody three hours later. <laughs> mm.
It was, a, it was yeah. a wonderful performance from him personally, is what I'm saying. Yes, he's mm. a very good player, mm. such to the point where he, he told the opposition captain that I am the best player. Yes, that's um, right. And, I like and we'll get to that. We will get to that, and we yeah. keep saying that. Mm. I like it that he just keeps teasing us out and just never yes. actually do it. That's right. Yeah, um, that's right. He is clearly uh, the best player in the world at the moment. Yeah. I, I think even against the off-spin of line, even when he doesn't quite get the half volley, the way he gets his hands through the ball oh, yeah. is just Beautiful unbelievable. Hands. I mean, you don't often see... Yeah, he either sort of plays and misses or he just middles everything. He doesn't yeah. really he doesn't really scrunt them around, does he? Yeah. He doesn't really he doesn't scrunt them. He doesn't scrunt them. Mm. And I've always said that. Mm. Um, so you know, fair play. I think like what's what's been shown though. I mean, uh, you know, there was there was the famous headline over here uh, saying scaredy bats, uh, sort of, of suggesting course. that Indian batsmen were, were frightened. Well, I don't know if that frightens, but like there's probably I mean it's only Pajara and Kohli who have stood up so far. Yeah. Um, the other batsmen just look a little bit short, but also they're facing some pretty good bowling. Maybe News Corp was right because the Indian batsmen did look like scaredy bats this morning. Mm. Um, they were out on that Monday. To be circuit. fair, that's absolutely t one of the scariest things in cricket is watching this Australian pace attack go against the tail. And now that they didn't pick Ashton, they had Yadav batting at yeah. eight. He averages twelve, which is just mm. ridiculous. You can't have an international batsman batting mm. eight who averages twelve. That mm. is that's ridiculous. Can we, can we have a word on Mitchell Stark, uh, who okay. clearly followed our recommendation last week to merely improve his body language, and once he did his body language, the yeah. rest technically and whatnot would follow. Nothing mm -hmm. to do with wrist position mm -hmm. or any technical improvements, just body language work. Uh, he absolutely worked over the Indian batsmen, uh, mm -hmm. especially the top order, to get Australia off to a really good start in both innings. Mm -hmm. um, clearly purchased one of those um, Facebook strap um, body language improvers or posture, mm, posture improvers improvement. that I keep getting uh, advertised about mm. on Facebook. Um, congratulations to Mitch and to that company, whoever gave him uh, the posture improver. It's a two-pronged thing there, Pez, because he can fix his spine and also puff his chest out a little bit further, which is all he needed. As a, as a former wicketkeeper in a past life, Pez, one of the most exciting things is on, I keep wanting to call him the Wacker. I'll just call it the Wacker. Please which do, yeah. Everyone's built on the yeah. same thing. The character will, of the Wacker. I will offend everyone in the Western Australian Please. Uh, state, but you know, we left there, so it's fine. Yep. Um, just like Catching balls of the wicket head with your fingers pointing up, it just looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pant was diving around everywhere, but doesn't Tim Payne look mm. clean and good with oh, his long cool. sleeves and his collar pops? And we'll get to Tim. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll get to Tim. Another, just a quick word, he goes on, um, mm. Nathan Lyon. Sure. Uh, I, I know you mentioned him earlier, player, domain player of the match, yeah. uh, as he's officially called these days. Are there any more superlatives for Nathan Lyon? Has a cricketer throughout time ever kind of actualized or overachieved on their potential as much as Nathan Lyon. Like I remember a few years ago when the term, the GOAT kind of arrived for him, he'd sort of broken some, you know, minuscule record in Australian cricket. And I always felt mm. like, I could be wrong, but like I always felt like there was a sense of uh, sarcasm mm. to kind of um, calling him the GOAT. Mm. Uh, now he like, he, he truly, he truly is the GOAT. Well, yes, he will finish his career as the third Leonard wicket taker mm. in Australian Test cricket history, which mm. is I, I still mind-boggling. He's gone past Johnson. He's gone past Brett Lee. He's mm. gonna he's gonna overtake Dennis Lilly. Yeah, it, it is actually unbelievable. He's I coming heard, for Pidge too. I, I heard uh, I heard colleague uh, Ricky Ponting the mm. other day was just mm. chatting at the water cooler. Mm. And uh, please look at us when we look at you in the press box. Please. And he said, like, "G'day." He goes, "I say, like, G'day, Rick. How you going, mate? You're up." And uh, and he was saying, you know, like t typically, you know, finger spin uh, in Australia is a graveyard. Um, yeah. You know, even Ashwin ca has come over here in the mm. last few tours, you know, morally, not really a finger mm. spinner, I wouldn't mm. say, morally, mm. more of a pitcher. Ooh. Um, but, uh, but you know, for, for him to do what he's done over here, you know, he's like probably taking more wickets here than he has on the subcontinent. It's just absolutely fantastic. He's, he's mm. going to finish, what, he could get 400 test wickets, which is... I could go five. Um, well, spinners can bowl for a very long time. He could go, he, he, I think he's got pidge in his sights. Okay. Mm. How many test wickets do you think, Nathan? I still think he's underrated. I still, yeah. I, I personally think he's the best finger spinner in the world at the yep. moment. Of course, that opinion means absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> the BBL yes. pairs, that starts tomorrow yep. as we are recording this, when we're, we're alive at the moment. But yep. um, but uh, the first game, Brisbane Heat versus the Adelaide Strikers. I mean, there's so many things to go across mm. here. Um, obviously, the Strikers won the competition last year. Yep. The Brisbane Heat somehow finished seventh. I don't know how. Their, their squad is amazing. Um, how excited are you for the Big Bash to start? Uh, look, I am excited, he goes, and we were talking about this off-air. You just said earlier, this is, uh, j just right now, that like mm. obviously the Strikers won the competition last mm. year. I'm going to put it out there. <laughs> that was not obvious to me. Mm. Uh, and it and yes, it, yes, maybe maybe we should have our research done and maybe we should know exactly, you know, be able to give a really deep preview in the BBL. And I could. 
if you need him to. But here's the thing about the BBL, it doesn't require context. It's context free and that's a good thing. Mm. In, uh, separate to test cricket, it's mm. kind of like the NBA. It's full of moments. Mm. It's full of little intense moments that you can put on, watch in the background, have a beverage of your choice. Mm. Who goes out there? Kids go out there. It's like a big disco. It's an mm. entry level element of cricket and I'm, I'm for it. So mm. I'm looking forward to it, but not in that kind of like, give me the big deep preview kind of uh, context. Like I, I just want to turn it on. I want colors. I want flair. I want fun. Well, yeah. uh, and uh, that's the way I consume and enjoy the Big Bash. He goes. I think it is the perfect sport for Instagram, uh, much in the same way that NBA is. I'm also looking forward to uh, hearing some of the uh, top 40 songs that I haven't heard in the last 12 months. Um, anytime there's a change of bowler, I'm not planning on going out this New Year's Eve, so I'm looking forward to seeing some fireworks this year. Yeah. Um, R&B dancers, never seen mm. enough of those. Mm. So looking forward to that as well. I am also looking forward to playing the CA game called Big Bash. It has no mention of cricket. It's just called Big Bash, mm. and that's what this sport is. Also, the, the bat flip for the coin toss, that's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing the advertisements all over that bat. Is the bat weighted 50-50? I'm not sure. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing questions. how you can make a disproportionately weighted, like like created bat. Doesn't make any sense. 50-50 in weight. But these are all, uh, that's what the a fair list of reasons to look forward to the Big Bash. Maybe not conventional reasons, mm. but the Big Bash isn't conventional. That's our way of promoting it well, on the uh, host network. And I've always said the Big Bash is not for people who like cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Another way to sell the game. That's what I've always said. To I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to, Pez, just before I push on, mm. Lloyd Pope, yes. you know, hope of the future. That's confusing. I need to reword that because it mm. sounds too much too similar okay. to his is last this live? name. Yeah. Lloyd Pope uh, is playing for the Sydney Sixers, and I'm excited by that. Um, and he's going to go up Is that up a, just a rig thing? Well, no, it's more of a salad thing, Lloyd yeah. Pope. Mm. I'm looking forward to his red salad and the pink kit. He's going up against the Scorchers of the SCG on Saturday afternoon. Uh, Scorchers, once again, they're always amazing. I mean, they, uh, yeah. they're always going, like, they're very passionate in the West, aren't they? Mm. You know, maybe playing off the stadium, maybe at the Wacker. I don't know. Mm. I don't know where always they play. Always look out for the Scorchers. The old Scorchies. The Scorchers. <laughs> Mate, looking at that team, they've got Berendorf, Richardson, Andrew <laughs> Tyne, Nathan Coulthonile. You know, <laughs> that could be the last bit of research I do for the Big Bash. I'm not sure. <laughs> Depends how Lloyd Pope goes. Let's yeah. find out what happens. That's right. That's mm. just how you talk normally about the Big Bash. How yes. about these Plays Berendorf, <laughs> yeah, etc. Oh, they yeah. play, do they? That's yeah. good. Oh, good for them. Uh, okay, you asked for it. Not really, but we know you are. We're going to delve into the verbals with a segment that we're calling Much Chat Out There. Now, let's explain that. Now, here goes. Mm. And, and, and to the viewer out mm. there, Mum, you play a bit of cricket. Yeah. Uh, when you get dismissed mm. in cricket, you're playing out there on a Saturday, whatever day you play these days, mm. uh, there's a number of pieces of information you can relay to your team when you get dismissed. You might be in a precarious match position. You might be out there, you might be able to relay information about what the ball is doing, what the wicket is doing. Um, is it spinning? Is it moving? Are they quick? Mm. You know, um, what's the umpires like? Mm. That's rarely what actually comes up in conversation when you get out, regardless of the match position. When you get out, you walk into the pavilion and invariably your teammates will ask, much chat out there? Mm. And we feel like that's how the test match has kind of rolled too. Like there was some of the greatest skill on display in this test match. There was very mm. tough cricket. There was some fearsome fast bowling from the Indians. Jasper Brummer, again, much respect. Mm. Um, but instead, the main headlines are going to be about the chat. So let's delve into it. We're going to go into kind of each moment mm. that we think was sort of the major moments mm. of sledging, banter, verbals, mm. whatever you want to call it, whatever euphemism you want to call it, yep. and sort of give a bit of a grade cricket overlay mm. to what happened, why it happened, what it actually means. Mm. Uh, is that fair? Is that fair to say you're going to kick us off? Yeah, okay, goes, I'll kick yeah. us off. Well, it all started with the well, I mean, the whole thing is basically Tim Payne and yeah. uh, and the Indian captain, Indian captain Virat Kohli over there. So. It really all sort of started when Tim Payne said to Virat, well, you've got a bat first too. Mm. Uh, Pez, you can explain the, the scenario behind this. Uh... Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Virat Kohli came up to um, Tim Payne and said, uh, you know, um, what was it? Was it? No, this wasn't the one where he said, um, I'm the best bat in the world. He says, mess it up and it's 2-0. Mm. Uh, that's what he said. And uh, Tim Payne just turned around and said, like, well, you've got a bat first, um, big head. Yes, um, which is a normal Australian criticism yes. to call someone a, a big head. That's mm. definitely what he said. Yes. Uh, it didn't sound like anything else. Big head is no. the normal thing mm. that Australians say to each other. And, and I just thought this interesting, mm. he goes, because like on the one hand, uh, Coley, from sledging tactical point of view, fo followed the golden rule, which is like you can sledge whomever you want after you've scored 100, mm. right? So that's fair. I've mm. scored 100. No one else has scored 100 in this match. And I'm going to tell him if you mess this up, it's 2-0, and I'm going to go and win the series. Mm. Um, but it was also risky because you only sledge once you've succeeded, um, and Payne kind of uh, exploited this, mm. didn't he? Because you know mm. Australia, uh, India still had 
to bat. Uh, of course, the cricketing gods rewarded Payne. Mm. Coley got out uh, for a minimal score, mm. and uh, Payne is now the don of graceful sledging. What was your mm. take on that? Originally, when he called him Big Head, yeah. as you said before, very a normal, normal uh, sledge for mm. an Australian male to call someone mm. a big head. Mm. I actually thought he said Bic Pen. Um, <laughs> yes, like you a did. You said that all And fair, then yeah. you said, no, 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 you know, it was Big Head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I thought him as more of, a, more of a ballpoint kind of guy, yeah. but it was actually Big Head is yeah. what he called him, and that's definitely what he said, not anything yeah. else. Nothing else. No. Okay, the second one, if we get, we're actually, we might go into some serious technical proficiency here and anything roll some happen. footage and audio. Um, this one. Keep it cool, Vera. Look how far we've come. It came after a near physical coming together between Payne and Coley, which we don't like to see. Lawler talked about, Peter Lawler, the journalist, talked about this. Uh, it's going to be a forerunner to some other things. We don't like to see that, but there was a near physical coming together. Payne had taken the easy single. Coley had walked in from mid off to the stumps, a normal thing to do. Uh, not really, had no reason to be there. Seemingly unaware of Payne, but also mm. blissfully mm. aware of Tim Payne. And uh, they sort of touched. Mm. sticking their chests out yes. uh, about four metres beyond where their actual heads were. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Chris Gaffney, the umpire, mm. intervened. He goes, and like, mm. oh, like my favourite part of this sledge where Payne ends up saying, keep your cool view out, was where Gaffney kind of said to Tim Payne, uh, you know, look, this, this is getting too far. You're both captains. Just play the game. And Payne was just trying to explain, no, this is a normal conversation. Uh, we'll just, you know, there's no swearing, just normal mm. conversation. It's just two guys mm. um, just chests caressing each other for um, a good couple of seconds, mm. trying to move but not move because mm. you don't want to be the person that actually moves, just normal guys mm. conversing uh, mm. on the cricket field. Pez, uh, my big takeaway from this, well, two actually, but, um, but uh, as you know, how flamingos communicate, they actually rub yes. their necks together. And that was what we saw here, just two pink flamingos engaging the conversation about the cricket. Also, secondly, when Chris Gaffney walked over, you know, I often akin to the situation, umpires have no power, no jurisdiction. They're like a parking inspector at a murder trial. Absolutely no need for them to be there. Just stay out of it, Chris, and let the big boys do the talking. <laughs> We're up to Captain 3 now. Mm. He goes, I believe you're introducing mm. uh, this one. This is... This is the big one. This is one of the big ones. Right. It's in the top six that we're doing, of the six we're doing. So this is uh, Coley to Payne. I'm the best player in the world, and you're just a standing captain. A few things going on mm. with this one, Pez, because I always think that it's never actually a good idea to just say directly the thing that's happening. Yeah. So there, there wasn't anything quite submersive or subversive yeah. about yeah. This, this comment. Literally, mm. Brad Coley is the best player in the world, yeah. and Tim Payne literally is a standing captain. So, mm. you know, if you're going to say something, it needs to be... you know. It needs to stick in the mind for years mm. afterwards. Yeah. I mean, some of the some of the best sledges I ever received, um, you know, was when I was seven years old in the backyard at Christmas Day. Mm. Um, but you know, for instance, Vrat could have walked over there and said, you know, I'm the best player in the world, and you know, those trousers make your hips look big. Exactly. Physical stuff always goes to the bone far deeper mm. than the literal interpretation where he just says, I scored 123 off 259 balls, whereas you only scored 38 off 89 or whatever it was. Mm. Like it needs some imagery. Mm. For, you know, you could say to Payne, if we're going to go down the physical route, yeah. um, Okay, I know you have a three-step skim regime mm. where you use Nivea, but um, I believe Garnier is a better product because mm. I actually own the Garnier <laughs> company because yeah. I'm the best player in the world, for example. That would stick in yeah. the craw a bit more. Whenever Tim Payne buys Nivea, he'd think about that sledge. Yeah, yeah. for years afterwards. Yeah, I, mean, years. I mean, Tim's three-step skin regime will go on much after his mm. playing career, so that will mm. stick in the memory for a long time. Mm. Okay, but this is where Payne kind of gets his own back in a slightly different kind of technique. Um, we're going to get some audio on this as well. Look how far we've come. Mm. Well, I know he's your captain, but you can't seriously like him as a player. You couldn't possibly like him. So, interesting uh, that he chose to say that because it, it's, it's kind of a compliment to Coley that he's actually said that. Uh, he can't get him on like cricket results, so he has to turn to character. And Australians famously, mm. Australian cricketers famously, are more interested in who's a terrible bloke than yes. who's actually good at cricket. Um, and the best part of this was that, like, Payne you know, bid his time a little bit. He copped it solo from 11 Indian players for his 116 delivery mm. innings in the second innings and just waited till he had his mates around him. So mm. it may look like he's talking to Murali Vijay, but actually he's just snickering, looking at kind of bat pad. Marcus Boogie Harris is under there. Mm. Um, Travis Head, I believe, was at Silly Point. Mm. Uh, and so that was him kind of getting his own oh. back, which is a perfect thing to do in the final innings. Just a good time with your mates out there, mm. isn't it? Just pack mm. mentality, nothing quite like it, um, because mm. then Mulgi Vijay couldn't say anything to that. He couldn't say anything back to that. The thing I want to ask you from that, he goes, is uh, do you think Coley could hear Payne saying that? And if not, <laughs> when Coley asked Murali Vijay mm. at the end mm. of the over, what are they saying? <laughs> yeah. How does Murali Vijay <laughs> respond? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I just I didn't actually catch it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I just play play straight. Work yeah, hard. Does. I mean, Payne touches on on something quite uh, sentimental to all great cricketers out there, and that you don't actually like anyone that you play cricket with. So I mean, it was a bit of an oxymoron that that question mm, in general. That's right. We played together. Um, okay, we'll move on to uh, the next big one, which uh, many of you won't have picked up because it actually doesn't involve Tim Payne or Virat Kohli. But mm. Nathan Lyon was bowling at mm. the time. And he just uh, he dragged Mooley VJ wide, mm -hmm. who then chopped onto leg stump mm. through the gate. Um, and we had uh, Travis Head there. Uh, there's the footage there of uh, he's there at silly mid off, and uh, he's just that's that's the uh, let him know you're there pose. Yeah. Um, so one of the key factors of fielding in close is that um, you can't really do anything in there. You're merely just a battering ram often mm. for cover drives for your for your your off spinners half volleys. Um, and you can't really do anything except for maybe move your shadow around on the pitch. Mm. But you know, if a, if a batsman makes a mistake, just let him know you're there. Yeah. And that was what that was. Although um, it's a really good pick up, he goes, and I know you were big on it off air. You, mm. you made sure that that got into the show, and rightly <laughs> so. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't originally think that was kind of that big a deal, but you, that was a very fine pick up from you. Mm. Nathan Lyon may have bowled a delivery that um, nearly went through the gate, but ended up getting Muralee VJ chopped on. He may have set him up mm. um, for many, many overs. Mm. He may have taken eight wickets for the match and yeah. clearly been uh, one of the major differences between both sides. But Travis Head would have possibly spoken to Muralee VJ under the lid for about three or four overs, so he felt like he owned that it's wicket. It's Travis Head's he? wicket. Yeah, it's exactly. Travis and, that's, wicket. and that's why he yelled right in his face uh, in a graceful way. Travis Head, one yeah, plus. That's right. Oh, Everyone else is, is running to celebrate with Lion, but that's yeah. Head just going, that was me. Yeah. That, was, <laughs> that was all me. Okay, the final one, which, which, which we're very happy with. Um, mm. It harks on a theme that we talk about quite a lot. It's the circuit. It was DeMarcus Boogie Harris, mm. uh, again, who's mm. coming up on the show. We've not even mentioned his 70 yet. But no. um, uh, I believe we've got some footage. Can we do it one more time? Yeah, so uh, like that sort of uh, comment, you know, really good again, one or two balls to go, and it's a sort of comment you can only make under the lid. And of course, you're not saying it to the batsman, are you? you're sort of looking at first slip or second slip or the keeper, mm. snickering a little bit, they're mm. laughing as well, mm. kind of encouraging you on while the batsman looks at you. <laughs> yeah. I like the idea, like, you know, you'd never take that literally. Like, if you're the batsman, you don't say, He's right, actually. His mum might be fairly good okay, circuit. Pretty decent night. No chance we're going to get these, right? That's Let's right. have a good night. I'm going to um, get out I now. Think, uh, I think one of the biggest lies ever told in the cricket field was that Perth is good on a Monday night. Mm. Um, all right. Hashtag AskTGC before we wrap the show up. Uh, of course, you can get us on social media at any time. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You know the drill using the hashtag AskTGC. So, I'll kick it off, Pez. Please. Adam Bedford writes in. He says, Girlfriend using wrapping, pa wrapping paper to shut a bat as a joke turned into coaching on having a high elbow and eventually watching AB de Villiers Masterclass on YouTube. Is she a keeper? And should I be worried about being the second best cricketer in the relationship? Uh, Adam, marry her, I believe. Um, if I ever uh, found my wife doing, and hello, um, Tori out there, but if I would, if I ever found Tori with a piece of like plastic wrapping paper mm. practicing her technique, mm. I would be over the moon. Mm. Um, I, I don't think it would ever happen. I'd say uh, she's a keeper, mm. Adam. Uh, anytime you get, you know, as a, as a man who's played any form of cricket, anytime you get like a long object, I'm thinking like umbrella, maybe like a maybe you know golf club. You're always just shadow batting in some capacity, mm. a rolled up towel. You know, I think there's many worse YouTube rabbit holes to go down than watching AB de Villiers masterclass videos with your partner. Okay, very good. Um, had me going there with um, grabbing a long, yeah. long object. Uh, Joe, uh, JJ Marnie 86 says, uh, hashtag Ask TGC, I dived to save a four on the weekend and mm. split my head open mm. on the sight screen. Do I need to change clubs? Uh, P.S. It was still four. <laughs> I like the desperation of this one, Pez, mm. that you are just, Joe, you're just looking to change clubs on any, any given opportunity, and you'll just find the smallest instant which, re, which mm. remotely involved you in the game yep. in a desperate uh, ploy to change clubs. Mm. Um, I don't think you should change clubs. No. I think you need to leave the game, possibly for good. <laughs> it is. I mean, the moral of the story is anytime anything slightly humiliating happens to mm. you as a man in Australia, run away from mm. it entirely. Mm. Just run. Mm. Um, Okay, all right, Pete Hicks writes in, he says, When you see a couple of blokes in the opposition warm up with the sloppy rigs, untidy salads, is your first instant that they look a bit rubbish, against all odds they've actually made it here on cricketing ability? We're in for a long day, Pez. Uh, they, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Like, it's hard to go past the idea that, like, I would prefer to play against a sloppy rig and untidy salad um, than mm. a very good rig and a tidy salad. Mm. Uh, when I play against the latter, I believe I'm against representative mm. players who have kind of got some sort of discipline in their life or mm. some sort of confidence. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a funny thing to think that... Um, if someone's got an, like a, it's a, it's like quite a bit of analysis actually to go well actually they're at this higher grade but they've got a sloppy rig they mm. 
all they could be is good at cricket. It's mm. actually quite a good thought. The most first thing you do though in any ground is you look at the opposition's rigs and mm. salads. That's the first thing that you do, not, mm. not, not even look at the pitch. Yeah, exactly. Don't watch their throw downs, don't watch them warm up and go, gee, they look a bit quick or whatever. Just look at the salad, look at the rig and you'll get your answer. William Quigley Smith to wrap things up here. Ask TGC, now that Tim Payne has proven himself through his banter on the field, uh, does that mean the Australian public no longer needs runs from him to justify his place in the team? Very fair question. Um, well, Virat Kohli's right. He's the filling captain and Virat Kohli is the best player in the world. Um, I don't think that we needed Tim to do anything. Mm. I, think, I think Tim's already done it. I mm. think he's brought back some humour. I'm all about this new Australian team. Oh, yeah. They're funny. Yeah. I can get, that's a team I can get behind. I'm yeah. all for it. So I don't know what the question was, but yeah. <laughs> I, I think, you know, as we've instructed many times on the grey cricketer, like there are certain things you can do in cricket that have nothing to do with runs and wickets that can ascend you up the grades or consolidate your place mm. in the team. Now, there's a bit of conjecture over whether Payne was only a few bad scores away from being dropped. Um, I believe that what he, the sound bites that he provided uh, to the host broadcaster, uh, Channel 7, mm. um, is enough to kind of keep him in for two or three more tests, even if he doesn't score runs. So yeah. I'm with William Quigley Smith. I think those uh, those words are more, you know, the, the the pen or the verbals were mightier than the blade. Pez, thank you very much for your company today. We're going to take a little break because next Tuesday is Christmas Day. We thought about it and we thought, mm, wouldn't have thought so. We are back though on New Year's Day. We're going to be on seven plus seven sports, seven cricket, Facebook, Twitter. You know the score. Ian Higgins here signing off with Sam Perry. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.